Good afternoon, Saints. Bless you. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. I'm Bishop Hutchison, and I'm always blessed and privileged to have these opportunities to come and speak life to you, Saints of God. Today, we're going to be having a subject or a title of Growing Faith. Growing Faith. Yes, and I, so I pray that you have your Bible, paper, and pencils prepared so that you can take notes fed along with us as we sung through our meditation and praise time that we're growing together in faith never alone we're growing together and so that's why i want you to have your bible paper and pencil so that you can search the scriptures see whether the things that i say are so or not and as we prepare for this week's lesson of growing faith i want you to say that with me children of god growing faith that means we must have faith that is growing. And our foundational text that we're going to use this week will speak to us about the different ways that our faith should grow or must grow if we are to truly be partakers of God's divine nature. And I pray that each and every one of you want to grow in order to be a partaker in God's nature. And so that's what this week's message is going to be about. So if you want to make notes, our foundational text is coming from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7 is going to be our foundational text that we're going to use for this week's message. And we also read a few other scriptures in that same chapter to give our verses context as well as look at several other places throughout scriptures that speak to the same issue about growing faith so you know children of god that if anything grows it evolves it transforms it doesn't remain the same and i pray that as you listen to this week's message that your faith will evolve your faith will be transformed that your faith will not be or remain the same. So let's take a look at our foundational text, and I'm reading from the New International Version today, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. We'll start reading at verse 5, where it says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love growing faith let us pray saints of god hallelujah hallelujah glory to your name father we bless you today we bless you for your dominion, your power, your majesty, your strength, your honor. We thank you for your super sacrificial love through the giving of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the shedding of his blood. We thank you for the resurrection power that raised him back to life again. And we thank you that he has given us access into your eternal kingdom. Through our faith, O oh God, today let our faith be stirred afresh today. Let our faith be renewed. Let our faith be revived. Let faith be imparted into those who are listening to the sound and hearing of my voice today. I thank you that they have faith for healing, a faith for provision, faith for salvation, faith to believe, O oh God, this day. Faith that brings joy and peace, self-control, and anointing into their lives. I pray it now, Father, that you will grant the petitions of your children as we come before your presence today with thanksgiving in our heart we seek your face O oh god for you are our only hope you are our only help it is in you we place our trust we believe in you O oh god so we praise you today in jesus name father son and holy spirit have your way through us and for us hallelujah amen praise the lord Welcome again, children of God, to this week's Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. This day we're talking about a subject or a title, Growing Faith. Growing 
faith. Some of you may say growing in faith. But the point I really pray that we'll get as we looked at our foundational text, we see that the writer encouraged the readers to add something to their faith. Faith would be the starting point, but it should not be the ending point. Not that you would ever lose your faith, but that your faith should be the foundation upon which other areas of your spiritual life will manifest or the different ways in which the Spirit of God will be manifested through your life or through your faith. And this is why we must have growing faith. And as we see in our text, there were several things that the writer wrote that I want to emphasize with each of you today. And we're going to go through these one by one and we're going to understand in context why he wrote what he wrote. And we're also going to see other references in scripture of how faith is, is a foundation for other things which are to be produced as a result of your faith. For instance, in Hebrews 11 and 1, it says faith is the substance. So faith is the foundational thing that produces substance. Faith is the evidence of things that are not seen, which means it will produce the evidence for things that you can't see if it is connected or rooted in faith. So from these examples we've talked about thus far, we know that faith is foundational. Faith in Christ, faith in the power of Christ, faith in salvation through Christ, faith that we can be healed and saved and delivered in the name of Jesus Christ, faith, the substance, the evidence of things that we can't see is our faith. And so if we have that foundation of faith, which I pray and believe that each and every one of us already have, if not, today will be a great day for you to, to, to allow God to excavate your heart and your mind, clear away any clutter or guilt or fear or doubt or shame. So that the seed of faith can also be planted in your life today. And from that, you can grow to develop these other things as your faith grows. Someone said to me, growing faith. That's what we're talking about today from our foundational text from Second Peter chapter 1. And so we want to perhaps back up a little bit in this text. We always want us to get the scriptures in the context of which the writer was writing or we will not get the correct understanding. So let's back up to verse number three. Now in most Bibles, translations, uh, it may have this section listed in your Bible as confirming one's calling and election. So in this entire subsection, the subject matter that the writer seems to be emphasizing is confirming your calling and election by God. And so in verse three, Let's just back up to verse 1 just to get the beginning of it because there's no need to try to be in a rush with it. Let's look at verse 1 of Second Peter to see how the writer began this particular uh, letter. In order, I think that will give us a greater insight into the content of the message. It says, Simon Peter, a servant of uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. So you see that he's writing this letter, the whole premise of this letter, everything else that we're reading in this message, things that we see he wrote, is written to those who have received a faith as precious as theirs. So that is the common foundation by which he's going to write the things that he would write. This is the same common foundation that I pray each one of you listening to my voice will already have or you will develop through the course of this message. So he says again, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Verse 2, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
His divine power, verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His glory and His goodness. Verse 4, through these He has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And then we get to our foundational text. For this very reason, for what very reason? Because of the fact that you have received divine power from God, that he has given you everything you need for a godly life, through which we have received great and precious promises so that we can participate in his divine nature, that we're able to live in a way that's pleasing to him, that we can live in a way where his power works through us because we have received his very nature. And this is why verse 5, which is our beginning of our foundational text, is relevant. So this is the reason why we can hold on to this negative truth today, saints. All the things that he has listed thus far about the divine power and receiving the knowledge of him who has called us. Having the divine nature for this reason or for these reasons, children of God. The writer exhorts you and I exhort you today to make every effort to add to your faith goodness. Why? Because he has called us by his own glory and goodness as we see at the end of verse number three. So if it is of God and we are of God, it should express itself as God expresses himself. Somebody says growing faith. And so here we see again the writer laid the premise for the message of those who have received a faith. As he says in verse number one, he's received a faith as precious as ours. And I want to believe that each and every one of you listening to my voice some way, somehow, some level, certain degrees, you have also received faith or desire to receive faith or knowledge of Jesus Christ and our God. For this very reason, he says again in verse 5, make every effort. That is, it must be something that you strive to do. It must be something that you want to attain. It must be a desire in you to know and to grow in God. Grow in your knowledge of him. Grow in your faith of him. And so here are some of the things that should be produced as you continue to grow in your faith. He says, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. So we see goodness is the first thing that should manifest or the first thing that he listed that will manifest in your faith life as your faith continues to grow. It will produce goodness. Now, if you know anything else about some of the writings of the same man who wrote, uh, another apostle who wrote a letter to believers in a church of Galatia, he wrote about what we call the fruit of the Spirit. You can make note of it. I may not have time to go there through this message, but Galatians chapter 5, you'll see a section entitled the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. So we notice that here Simon Peter is writing about the same Spirit that, it, that the Apostle Paul spoke about because they were both of the same faith. They have both received faith alike. The same faith that you and I possess today. So as you read Paul's letter to the Galatians, as you look at this letter that Peter wrote, you'll see that they're both talking about things that equate to the fruit of God's spirit or the character of God's nature. So add to your faith goodness. Let's take a look at the word goodness for a moment. Let's get a working definition for what the word goodness means so that we can know what is it that is to be produced in our life or through our life as we build or grow in our faith. I mean, you know that faith is the starting point 
but where you start at shouldn't be the same place you end at. Your faith should always stay intact, but your faith should grow and manifest through other tangible ways in the earth in order for your faith to be rewarded at the end of your life. So saints of God, it's very important that we grab a hold of these truths today, that we have growing faith, not just faith, but growing faith. Someone said to me today, growing faith. Yes. When you say that, I want you to be prophesying over your own spirit, over your own soul, saying your spirit and soul to grow. Grow in goodness is the first area, which here's a working definition for goodness. It is the quality of being good. It goes on to express itself as the quality uh, of having a preference of right versus wrong. It is integrity, honesty, uprightness. It has morality and it has the character of conduct or conduct that entitles the possessor to approval and esteem or to receive favor from others because of his goodness. So saints of God, so he says to your faith, which is the substance of the things that we're hoping for, faith, which is the evidence of things we can't see, these are the things that we do see as a result of our faith, and that is goodness. That is the integrity, your honesty, your uprightness. So you see why Jesus says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah, saints of God. For these are manifestations of the Spirit of God. These are the things that produce to those who are growing in faith or have growing faith, goodness. And then from goodness, he says, add knowledge. So we must add knowledge, not just a general knowledge of anything in the world, but growing in our knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Peter wrote about that in verse number three. He says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and by his own goodness. So it, again, this is why this goodness that we speak of here is a fruit or character of God. It is not our own goodness. It is his goodness that should be producing in those who have received his spirit. And this is why Jesus says, unless a supper man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. But as we go through the end of this week's message, you will understand again how that is repeated through Jesus' disciples and the apostles who went out to proclaim the message of God's kingdom to the rest of the earth. This is the same message that is being proclaimed through my mouth today by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that it's the same message that will be proclaimed and displayed through your life as you receive this word today. Growing faith. So we see the first thing the writer says to add to his faith was goodness and to goodness knowledge. So let's break down the word knowledge for, for a minute. We know that knowledge means to, to learn of something, to get a better understanding of something or someone. And so God not only wants us to be people of integrity and uprightness, he wants us to be people who have a desire to learn of him. Jesus says in one of the texts in the Gospels, All come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So an aspect of knowledge that should be added to our goodness, which is connected to our faith, should be we want to learn of him. If you're listening to this message today, our students in our Bible college program, those who participate in our small group teaching sessions, you have a desire to learn of him. That is growing faith. So again, knowledge is facts, information, or skills acquired through experience or education. It's a practical understanding of a subject or a person. That is knowledge. So God wants you to know him. Specifically through his son, Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God, God made flesh, Emmanuel. He wants you to know of him. We have a course in our associate's degree program called Knowing Christ, Who Jesus Is. If you're interested in having growing faith, saints of God, then you may want to order one of those textbooks or enroll in one of those courses so that you can have your faith continually producing the things that the writer is speaking of here. So thus far, we see that as we, if we're going to have growing faith, I want you to say it again, growing faith. If we're going to have growing faith, we must add to our faith goodness, and to goodness we must add knowledge. But the growth process doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with just goodness and knowledge. Remember, this is growing faith. That is, it is a continuing process that never ceases, even when in the natural biological world, when a plant grows this season, the flower may fade away in the next season, but it grows, a new plant grows again next season. So we should continually be producing things in and out of season, saints of God. So here we are with our faith intact in the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as Peter laid the foundation in verse number one. We have the righteousness of our God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is our faith is in God and through his son, Jesus. And for that reason, we're adding to that faith, goodness, and knowledge. And to our knowledge, as our faith continues to grow, we're going to add self-control. Hallelujah, somebody. Self-control. So let's take a look at what self-control means for a working definition. It is very important that we not only hear these words, that we understand these words, and that we apply these words to our life. So not only should we have faith, not only should we have goodness, which is honesty and integrity, not only should we have honesty and integrity, but we should have an understanding of God, or a desire to get an understanding, or knowledge, or understand the facts or information about Him, or concerning Him. We want to learn of God. This is why I pray you're going through your lesson scriptures with us now or making note of them so that you can continue to meditate upon the word of God. That will be an indication of your growing faith. Hallelujah. So here we are at self-control now. Self-control is the ability to control oneself or the ability that God gives you by his Holy Spirit to control oneself, your actions, your thoughts, your behavior, your words. Particularly, it mentions being able to control your emotions and your desires, especially in difficult, trying, or tempting situations. One of the persons I think about in the Bible who displayed self-control was Joseph in the Old Testament when he was in part of his house and his wife would tempt him to have a relationship with her every time he came into the home. But he had self-control, he would have the ability to control himself, particularly his emotions, his desires, in that difficult and tempting situation. So we need to add that along with our faith. So you see, faith alone is simply the starting point, I'll say with you again. From that starting point, there's a line of progression that will take place in our life. And so as we go on that line of progression, we should develop goodness, as we talked about. We should acquire more knowledge about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We should also uh, start to exhibit self-control. This is growing faith, saints of God. So I pray right now that each one of you who have already established yourself in faith in God and Jesus Christ as his son, that your faith will now grow into these other areas. So, so far we've talked about adding to our faith, goodness, knowledge, and self-control. But the growing process doesn't stop there. It goes on from self-control, we should add perseverance. Perseverance. I pray you're taking notes and writing these down, or be sure to listen to the, the archive recording of this message. Perseverance, let's talk about that for just a moment as we continue with our message today about growing faith. I hope you're seeing, saints of God, how God expects us to continue to grow. That our faith is not the end of it all, it is the beginning of it all. Perseverance is steadfastness, 
in doing something despite difficulty or despite the delay in achieving success. The fact that it doesn't happen now doesn't mean it won't happen then. Just because it doesn't happen when you want it to doesn't mean it won't happen. Perseverance gives you the ability to believe that. This is why your faith can seem to be stronger as it grows and you develop perseverance. That is a steadfastness to continue to do something, to continue to believe something, to continue to speak something despite difficulty or the delay in achieving success. It may not seem like it's accomplishing anything, but as you get the spirit of perseverance in your life, as your faith grows, thanks to God, you'll be steadfast, unmovable, as Apostle Paul says. You'll always be abounding in the work of the Lord. So perseverance is something that will be produced as we grow in our faith or as we have growing faith, which is what we're talking about today. Let's, let's go on and see what else the writer says here in our verses. Then it says, to perseverance, add godliness. So now we want to add godliness to our ability to stick with things, to not to give up on things. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do anything. So godliness means you're going to conform to the laws and the wishes of God. You're only going to follow God's way of doing things, not the world's way of doing it. Hallelujah, saints of God. So in order for you to do things the right way, you must do it God's way. This is why Jesus says again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which means God's way of doing things. So to our perseverance, we add God in this. We're going to conform to God's laws and God's wishes. We're going to follow your word. Your word is going to be a lamp unto my feet, God, and a light unto my path. Somebody said growing faith. See, this is past this, the beginning stages of believing in God. Specifically, Jehovah, Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, El Shaddai, and God's Son, Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God's with us. This is past that beginning stage where you have now been able to produce goodness, integrity, honesty, uprightness in your life. Like Job, the scriptures describe Job in the Old Testament as an upright man. His faith wasn't, he didn't just have a words of faith about God, words of faith in a God. He exhibited his faith through his integrity. His honesty and his uprightness. Saints of God just need to be the same way that you and I are able to express the true nature of God to a lost and dying world. So we see godliness is conforming to the laws and the wishes or desires of God. To godliness, we are to add mutual affection. And for mutual affection, we can look at it as having sympathy for one another. Having understanding for each other having harmony between one another. Realizing that whatever affects one person affects us other persons. Paul wrote about it in his letter to the Corinthian church where it says we are one body in Christ. If one suffers, we all suffer with it. When one rejoice, we all rejoice together. So it's very interesting to note that as you see the different apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ, they had the same message because it is only one God. It's the same spirit that lives in us. The same spirit that was in Peter was the same spirit that was in Paul. The same spirit that was in Peter and Paul is the same spirit that you receive when Jesus grants you the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. This is why you must be born again of the water and the spirit. We're talking about growing faith, saints of God. We, we have to advance beyond our beginning stages and go on to more advanced stages of our faith walk and that's what we're talking about today our last part of the growing phase we talked about was mutual affection hallelujah and then finally in this particular outline the apostle peter said to your mutual affection i want you to add love now for some definitions love means intense affection 
So mutual affection would be almost like on a friendly level, a casual level, where I may just see you and then go on, and whenever I see you, I may be nice and kind and affectionate towards you, speak good words to you. But love goes deeper than that. Love goes beyond the, the, the act of showing affection, uh, whether with a handshake or with a kiss on the cheek or with a handshake. Love goes beyond the mutual affection, almost the general, uh, the general um, corporate type of affection that we have for all people. The writer went on to say that to your mutual affection, I want it to go deeper than that. I want, it, I want you to add to your mutual affection, love. The agape love. Not only that you will sympathize with the other person, but that you will empathize with them, which means you will put yourself in their shoes. And you will do unto others as you will have them do unto you. And this is what the Apostle James wrote about in the book of James. And I want you to Take a look at that for just a moment. So I pray you seen saints of God. And I thank God for your faith, which is the beginning stage of where we all should start from. Faith in God, faith in Jesus as the Son of God. And then goodness as we grow. Then knowledge as we grow. And self-control as we grow. Perseverance as we grow. Godliness produces as we grow. Mutual affection produces as we grow, and love will result as we grow. A deep love, saints of God, and what we call in the Greek an agape love, which is unconditional. It is not based on what you do for me. It's based on what I'm going to do for you. So the Apostle James wrote about this as we prepare to close out this week's lesson. Make note of James chapter 2 verse 14. He says this, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but have no works? Can such faith save them? Thanks, I want you to know today as you meditate upon this week's lesson entitled Growing Faith. This is why your faith must continue to grow. Because just having faith, just claiming to have faith, but having no works, your, that faith cannot save you. The writer went on to say that if you see a sister or a brother who is without clothes or daily food, you should feed them. This is where the sympathizing, the mutual affection must turn unto love. You must provide them with the things they are without if you're truly going to love them, which is a part of what growing faith is. I pray today in the name of Jesus that each and every one of us would have a desire to grow in our faith, that we would have a desire for goodness, that we would have a desire for knowledge, to have self-control, to persevere, to exhibit godliness, mutual affection and love for one another. And I pray now by the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit, that he will blow afresh upon you today to impart in you his spirit, his spirit that gives life, and this life will lead us into an inheritance in God's kingdom. I want you to read the rest of that chapter that we gave you. From, James, from 2 Peter chapter 1. It has a lot of good results in it for us. And I believe that the results will be manifested truly in the life of every person who surrenders himself to growing faith. In Jesus' name, amen.